Hey there, I'm Freddie Wan. I'm going to share some ideas on how you can start using effective lighting to create a mood and a style for your videos that will really engage your audience. So first, let's talk about what is good lighting and why might you want to have good lighting. You might not think you know what good lighting is, but you almost definitely know what good lighting is not. Uh, when you see a video with someone who like you can't really quite see or there's a big window in the back and you can't see their face or there's so much light that you can't actually make out any details or maybe the light just doesn't say anything and doesn't really give you a mood or a sense of what the scene is about. Good lighting helps you communicate your ideas through the look of your video and helps you connect your audience in an emotional way. Not only can they actually see what's going on, the lighting helps you share your ideas by becoming a part of the story or creating a powerful mood. So I think good lighting is lighting that effectively communicates the story that you're trying to tell without being too obvious or without drawing too much attention to itself. Um, I think a lot of times people think, oh, we got light, and they just go and turn on every light that they have, and they make it sort of very bright and garish, and they'll think, it's like, well, maybe you don't need that much. And what's more important is expressing kind of what you're trying to say, and if it's you know, sort of a very sort of solitary scene or whatever it is, and, and making sure that the lighting matches up with the mood of what you're trying to create. And I think one of the best examples we have of this is not something that I lit, but something that our very talented director of photography, John Salmon, lit for season three, episode two of Video Game High School. Uh, Key's whole story is like a noir sequence, and it's shot in a very different style than the rest of the show. Generally, Video Game High School is a very sort of evenly uh, flat, sort of generally flat, uh, look and, and this was one where John really got to go crazy with uh, the noir style and like very moody shadows because it's sort of a mystery that the character is figuring out and so the lighting there I think really helped accentuate the uh, tone and the mood of that piece and really makes that segment stand out from everything else that we've ever shot. How can you choose the best lighting style for your video? With so many lights and options to choose from, pick the kind of lighting style that works best for the videos you're making for your fans. Like, for example, if you're doing a vlog or making a comedy video, uh, you might want to make sure that your, our videos are a little bit more brightly lit and a little more evenly lit because uh, you want people to be focusing not necessarily on a dramatic scene, but on the comedy or you as a vlogger. You can always adjust by adding a backlight or a rim light. If you do something a little more dramatic, like maybe like an action movie or a thriller or even a music video, you might want to consider adding more contrast or playing with the color of your lighting so that your image feels more dynamic and exciting. Brightness, contrast, and color. These are the elements that can really help you establish your own style and tell the story that you want to tell or build the world that you want to create. So I think when you start off, you know, I think you'll start playing with sliders and start making things brighter or, you know, throwing color and saturation and doing all these things because you want to make something that looks cool. And to be honest, actually making something that looks cool is not a bad place to start. Uh, but what's important is that you really think about what the choices that you're doing in terms of altering the look of your image, how that's affecting what you're trying to say. Like an easy example would be like a horror scene. If it's supposed to be a horror scene and it's everything's brightly lit and you can see everything, that doesn't really communicate exactly what you know, you're trying to go for if you're trying to make someone feel scared. You know, on the other hand, a really brightly lit horror scene oftentimes can stand out in that movie. It might you know, ease your viewer into a false sense of security if you're going to hit them with a jump scare later. I mean, these are all things that you can learn very basically just by watching movies and being conscious of the lighting choices that the uh, directors of photography in those movies are making. One of the simplest elements of lighting is the brightness level. The brighter the light, often the lighter the mood that you create. Also, the easier it is to see things. You can adjust brightness by adding light or moving it closer or further from your subject. Contrast refers to the difference between the lightest part of your image and the darkest part of your image. So maybe some areas of your frame are well lit, whereas others are intentionally darker to create a more interesting texture. Adding contrast helps you create a three-dimensional look to your video to make it more dramatic. Changing the color quality of the light is an immediate and powerful way to influence the mood of your video. Cooler colors can generally create a more calm mood or indicate, say, a night scene, whereas warmer colors tend to feel more intimate. How many careers does it take to screw in the light bulb? Ha! That depends on how many lights you have. Uh, I feel bad for that. Now let's dive into some more tools to help you get the most out of your lighting. Different lighting angles are a simple way for you to adjust any lights that you have to work with to create a new look or feel. Using multiple lights is a great way to allow you more flexibility and power to start to tell a story and create more of a mood with your lighting. If you're using an interior lighting kit, the simplest light if you're going for a flat, even look is your front key light. 
This key light can also help create that magical light in your eye, which is the keyhole to your soul. The little glint in there and sometimes that's very important uh, to make your subject look a little more human and help you emote a little bit more with uh, what you're shooting. If you want to start adding a bit more shape to your subject, try adding a fill light on the side and a little bit farther away and back off to the side of your subject. It'll give your subject a little more dimension and depth. And if you really want to give your frame some texture, consider adding a backlight on the background, maybe even a rim light from behind my head or your head to give you a nice little halo effect and really make it pop from the background. If you're outside during the day, you may want to consider shooting in the shade so that you're not squinting into the sun, but you can still get a dynamic range of color where not everything's blowing out. So there are a lot of different kinds of lights, so where should you start? Creators who make specific choices about the types of lights they use are able to connect their audience a little bit more effectively. The different options for lighting boil down to three basic choices. Daylight, the sun, practical lights, which are lamps or lights that you have lying around, or a lighting kit or lights that you buy or rent. Each one of these options can be a good option, so let's see which option is the right one for your videos. Natural light is great because it's super bright and the brightest known source in our galaxy, but there are limitations, mostly because you can't control where it is. It's completely not up to you. A practical light, like a lamp or a lighting kit, which can be a little bit more limited in its reach, allows you at least some more flexibility than the sun. You can choose if you'd like to have a cool light, like a fluorescent bulb, or a warm light, like a tungsten bulb, and you can also position the light to wherever you'd like, change the angle, contrast of the lighting, adjust the intensity of light on the subject, so many things you can do with a lamp. All in all, both sources can be good options, but you, what you use is going to depend very much on the kind of mood that you're going for. Now let's chat about when, how, and why to use natural light. Using natural light is a very effective way to make sure that your audience can, well, see your videos. But there's also some very important things to consider to make sure you're not overlighting or creating distractions for your eyes that might otherwise take away from what you're trying to say. So when you're outside, one of the things you gotta realize is the sun is very powerful. And there's very little you can do to combat the sun. Because natural light is so bright, and if you're like directly in the sun, it can produce some eh, not so flattering effects, like squinting, dark shadows, overexposure, where everything loses its color and looks washed out. That's stuff that you generally want to avoid. If you're outside, consider finding a shady area, which still allows you to take advantage of the brightness and the quality of the sun's light, but doesn't produce necessarily the same harsh shadows that can sometimes cause your actors to squint or otherwise be distracting. If you're inside, try covering any windows that you have with a diffuse curtain or something, so that way you still get the sense that it's you know daylight outside, but without overexposing everything in your scene. Curtains or blinds can be a nice way to quickly and efficiently adjust the light coming through from outside. Adjusting your camera settings, of course, or using an ND filter can also help account for some of these challenges. Another type of light that you can make yourself is to go and buy some clamp lights uh, that you can get like at any home or garden store. It's an entire aisle of light bulbs actually there. Uh, you get some tungsten ones, you get some uh, fluorescent ones. Literally just buy a bunch of light bulbs and see how they uh, look and see how they look on camera and see how they affect uh, you know, sort of the scene and the mood and how powerful they are. And, you know, and once you sort of have that in mind, then you can start sort of applying those tools. So if you're doing a vlog style uh, lighting setup and you don't have a lot of time or equipment, the easiest thing you can do is think about it like this. Prioritize what is the most important part of the frame, which is going to be probably your face. Uh, and in general, light it evenly and uh, light it in a way that doesn't make it pop out too much from the background. Easiest way to do this is get a lamp or two lamps from both sides of the camera and then some sort of diffusion uh, in front of the lamp. Um, if you can get you know, literally things like t-shirts, uh, white t-shirts, uh, cloth, uh, anything that has a kind of diffuse source that you can kind of look through and kind of, kind of barely see through, that's the kind of thing you're going to be looking for to throw over your lamp. Make sure, by the way, whatever you're using doesn't like catch on fire. All these options just give you more uh, options in terms of how you want to shape the light to tell a more dramatic or exciting story with your levels of contrast and color. In the last part, we can go into some detail about lighting tools like diffusion, gels, and bounce cards. Diffusion paper, for example, allows you to make your light softer, whereas a gel actually changes the color quality of your light. Let's say you want your subject to have a soft glow or to make your subject feel a little more approachable or casual. How could you do that if all you had was a giant, bright, harsh light bulb shining on them, making them look, well, scary and unapproachable? If you want to soften that harsh light, you might want to consider using a diffusion. A bounce card is basically just a giant white board which you made out of styrofoam or poster board and you use it to bounce light from a lighting source 
onto your subject to fill in shadows, even out the quality of the light, or add light to areas where it's not being hit by the uh, lighting source that you have. When you're outside, the thing I think you need most is a bounce card because you're going to use that to fill in the shadows uh, of your subject's face because if that's what you're going to be focusing on, it's going to be very important. Uh, and especially for things like close-ups, medium shots, uh, bounce card will allow you to actually be able to shape the light coming from the sun. Bounce card and diffusion because a lot of times direct sunlight is very harsh. It'll create direct shadows. You can throw up a diffusion and make sure the shadow of the diffusion covers over your subject's face uh, and makes it a little more evenly lit. Oftentimes, you know, when we go outside, that's all we take along with us is a bounce card and some diffusion. If you want to have your light give off a particular mood, consider giving it a color that helps achieve that feel. For example, is it a party scene? Because color lights work great in party scenes. By giving your lights a hint of color or a bolder color, you can change the mood of your scene. A hint of yellow, for example, might make you feel a little more joyful, whereas a bit of red might signal warning or danger. So in terms of like really bold color choices, we did a video called Arcade Dominator uh, Redux, where I you know, do an action scene once again inside an arcade. And we went for a very sort of neon, look in there. You know, it's almost like a party scene. You know? So we were very bold with sort of the colors that we were going for, generally sort of blues, purples, uh, sort of magentas, and we were all over the place with it. So there was an opportunity there for us to determine the mood and determine the feel in a space where generally you couldn't really see much if you just put the camera up and started shooting. Probably the best part about lighting is that you can take familiar environments and transform them. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to check out more lessons like this one from the Creator Academy, click over here. If you want to see some of the stuff that we do, check out youtube.com slash rocketjump or just click over here.